So the big problem is there's an ever increasing demand for power wires and data wires. And the problem that designers have and architects and engineers have, if you're a facilities professional, the problem that you have is how do you fit more wires and cables into a space, especially into a space where people work? Like we mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, we're not necessarily talking about an industrial application, a data center where there's a huge 100,000 square foot data center and 10 people working there, and they basically change out servers. We're talking about human occupied spaces like offices, call centers, where there's cubicles, 911 command centers. People have to live and work in these places, so they don't want cables to be in the way. So that's the other problem is how do you fit all these extra wires and cables into a limited amount of space? And how can you do it in such a way that has a limited impact on the occupants of that building? And of course, we're here to talk about cable management flooring. So our solution is cable management flooring is the best way to manage cables. But of course, why? Why do we feel cable management flooring is the best way to manage cables? And to do that, to answer that question, we're gonna quickly talk about other ways of managing cables. There's a tried and true method called concrete trenching, core drilling, concrete trenching. If you've been in construction, if you're in the design industry, you know what this is. If you're not, just to tell you what it is really quick, um, basically if you have to run wires or cables, you run them through the concrete subfloor. Now there's two ways to do that. One is if it's a new building, you run your conduit, run your wires in the conduit, and then you pour your concrete subfloor. Um, that's good for physical security and it's a tried and true method. The problem is you can't easily get access to those wires and cables later on down the road. And that is a problem because in today's world, you are always, uh, renovating or upfitting or changing the configuration of your office. You're adding employees. Hopefully we're adding employees because our businesses and organizations are growing, right? Another, uh, another thing is you have to have easy access to these wires and cables. And when they are encased in concrete, it is very hard to get to those cables and move them around. So cable trenching and concrete trenching is one way to do it, but it's very slow especially if it's an existing building where there's already a concrete slab. The only way to really do it, and you can see this guy here in the blue hard hat with his, his pretty cool uh, little uh, concrete trencher there. The only way to do it is to go through with a concrete trenching machine. Uh, most of them are not sit down like this to go through and to dig a trench. It's a very slow process. When we talk about how many uh, linear feet you can accomplish, you can cut through, we're usually talking on the order of 10, 20, 30 feet per night. And I mention per night because if you're in a building that's occupied already, there is no way the building manager is gonna let you concrete trench during normal operating hours. It's just too loud, a lot of vibrations, a lot of water, a lot of dust and dirt. So you have to do it at night. So this is one way to do it, and it works, but the problem is once you go in and trench out the concrete, yeah, you can lay conduit, run your power and data wires through it, but then guess what you have to do? You're already a couple weeks into your project. You've had to move everybody around to different workstations, close off floors, move them somewhere else because it's so loud and dirty. Then you have to go and cover the conduit back up with fresh concrete. So it's kind of counterproductive. We are trenching out the concrete, we're putting in the cables, and then we're going back and filling it back in with more concrete. It's a slow, expensive process. Now, the guy in this little device here seems like he might be having a lot of fun, but trust me, if this is your building or your facility, it is not a lot of fun. It's costly, it takes a lot of time, and when it comes down to project scheduling, it will slow down your project scheduling. Another way of managing cables is overhead cable management. And there's a couple little subdivisions of this. One is if you're in a data center, you might have a 30 foot high ceiling and overhead cable management is the de facto way of doing it. I mean, it's not a big deal because you're not gonna have a lot of guests coming in. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. You can just run your cables overhead in cable uh, raceways or cable trays. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Um, this becomes a problem, though, when you're doing this in an office because people don't want to see wires. 
visitors, your customers, your clients, they don't want to see wires. You don't want your employees having to stare at wires all day long and conduit all day long. So overhead cable management works for industrial type applications, but when there's humans involved, which humans are involved in the vast majority of buildings, when they're involved, overhead cable management just doesn't work out very well. Um, one slight caveat to that is if you have a drop ceiling, like a suspended ceiling, and if you work in an office space, you know what I'm talking about. You get up on a ladder or a chair, you can pop up the ceiling tiles, and you get all the dust and all that stuff that falls into your face. That's a drop ceiling or a suspended ceiling. You can do overhead cable management in that kind of a situation, but it's very hard to get to because every two to four feet, you have to pop out a new ceiling tile. So it's very hard to install the cables and the wires. And then later on down the road, when you expand and you have 50 more people in your facility, how easy is it to get up on a ladder or a scissors lift and add new power wires and run new Cat5 wires? It's not easy, it's very difficult. So again, if there are people involved, overhead cabling is not the best way to manage your wires and cables. Here's another couple examples. It's easy and straightforward to manage cables overhead, but only in certain situations like data centers or in places where people don't wanna see the cables. A couple other alternative methods of cable management. These are here kind of as a joke, but this is what many people's office looks like. And I hate to say it, I sell cable management flooring, but if you saw my office, there are actually cables and wires on the floor because I'm a little messy with my computers and my other electrical devices. But look around your office right now and you probably have a power strip and some cables that are right in the way. They shouldn't be there. So you need to find a better way to do it. And this is just kind of a funny uh, example here where you know I have actually tripped and I know other people have tripped. You've probably tripped on a cable or wire in your office before. So it's one way to do it, um, but it's not recommended. There is a better way. And if you're watching this, this video uh, on YouTube or if you're here uh, listening to it live with the webinar, you've heard of NetFloor USA, obviously, and you've heard that there is a better way to manage cables. And we believe there is a better way, and we're going to talk about it. So you've seen concrete trenching. You've seen overhead cabling. You've seen what it looks like. It's either loud or dirty or noisy, or it's very obtrusive. It gets in the way. It's not pleasing to the eye. So what does cable management flooring look like? If we know what the other methods look like and how they work, what does cable management flooring actually look like? This is what it looks like. This is a public library. Like I said, there are so many applications for cable management access flooring. Public libraries are one of them many people would never have thought about. This is a really nice public library. Uh, you can go to our website, netfloorusa.com. There's a case study on this exact project where we can uh, walk you through the process, show you some before, during, and after photos. We actually have a video, a time-lapse video, of the construction of this building and how we installed the raised floor. A couple things I wanna point out here. Um, as you can read, it says, can you find the hidden electrical and data floor boxes? Most people, it's kind of like a Where's Waldo thing. Most people cannot see where the cables are. They can't find the electrical boxes. So I'll point them out to you. There's one uh, kind of on the left side of the screen between two bookshelves. And then to the right of those blue chairs, there's another one. It's very hard to see, and that's the point. If you could look under, if you had x-ray vision, and you could look under this floor. It is completely wired up with uh, 120 volt, 208 volt wires and data wires, Cat5 e wires. It's completely wired. But if you're a um, patron of the library, if you're coming in off the street to do research or look up a book, if you're a parent bringing your child in to do some research, you would have no clue that, that underneath your feet is a cable management floor full of wires, full of data and power. All you know is you go in and when you need to access a terminal or a computer to get internet access, you need to do some research, all you really know is that it works. You know that this is a beautiful library and the two towns that joined up together to do this, uh, Madison and Mayaden in North Carolina, they did a wonderful job. The architect 
did a wonderful job. The photographer who took this photograph did a great job, and we have links to their websites and their information in the uh, video information when we put this on YouTube. But everybody involved with the project did a wonderful job. And the point of this is you've seen what all the other methods of cable management look like. This is what it looks like when you use a cable management floor. You can't even tell you're using a cable management floor. The building is there. It's a beautiful building. It works. It has flow. It's very pleasing to the eye. And it works. For whatever purpose it serves, it just works. And our goal, the point that we're trying to make, and our goal is to do such a good job with managing your wires and cables that you actually forget you're standing and working on a cable management access floor. So this is what it looks like. You can barely tell that there's a cable management floor there. 